we're here in the uh, our new council chamber for the uh, wide field SETI workshop. So SETI is the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Basically what we do is use technology as a proxy for intelligence. If we detect some electromagnetic emission that comes from another technology, we can infer the presence of other intelligent life elsewhere in the universe. So far, we haven't really been very successful. In fact, we've been completely unsuccessful. So this is an opportunity, especially radio related SETI searches to think about you know, what we've done in the past, um, but perhaps think about how we can do it better in the, in the future. Rather fittingly, the first talk in, at the first event was by uh, Professor Jocelyn Bell Brunel, who uh, famously discovered pulsars. Probably a perfect example of someone making a, ma a large discovery while trying to do something else. I think the biggest challenge is not just focusing on the things you know about, but taking note of any other hints that there are in the data a lot of which will have terribly mundane explanations, you know. But in amongst that, there might be some signals that are worth retrieving. And as we go to much late, larger databases, and the analysis is basically done online by a computer, we run the risk of the computer only finding what we tell it to look for. We have the Breakthrough Listen program um, being run from, from Berkeley, that's funded by Yuri Milner. Um, an entrepreneur in the US uh, and that is sort of also transforming radio SETI. There are large amounts of observing time on the largest telescopes in the world that for the first time are ded dedicated to SETI and also there are really for the first time systematic surveys being done. Private philanthropy brings uh, quite a lot to the table. Of course funding is very important but also relationships with with industry, uh, technology companies in particular, uh, is something that can bring very important technical capabilities to the field as well. What kind of signals are you, lo are you looking for? We don't know um, but the SKA uh, is designed with uh, quite a bit of flexibility from the offset it was designed to do multiple things at once so simultaneously. So SETI observations would f fit in uh, in this, this similar way. You know I'm an optimist so I'm, I'm hopeful uh, that, uh, that we'll succeed um, but, but ultimately uh, we, we don't know until we look and, and that's in fact the only way that we're ever going to answer this question is by actually conducting these experiments. It's definitely the definition of a high risk, high reward uh, type of search. In the process we'll develop new ideas, new techniques that could be used in other places as well. So even if we don't find SETI, it's not wasted effort. We'd be mad not to do it. Um, even if the chances of success are very, very small, if we were to succeed, it would be, it would be the biggest discovery ever.